Hey everyone, in this video we will be taking a look at some post-installation steps that we need to follow after having installed Oracle 19c database. Now the post-installation steps that we will be taking a look at here need to be followed for any version of Oracle starting from version 12c and higher. We have installed 19c so we will also be following the steps. Now the reason we actually follow the steps is because uh, not following the steps sometimes cause issues like not being able to log in into your uh, pluggable database and sometimes not being able to uh, create system ac uh, create user accounts and not being able to log in into your system account sometimes as well. So let's see what we have to do. At first, we will go into the Oracle home directory, which is basically the directory where you have downloaded and extracted the zip file that, uh, from earlier video. Okay, here you will see that we have a folder called network. So let's see here. Open this folder and here you will see we have another folder called admin. Open this folder and here you will see we have a file called dnsnames.org. So we are going to have to do some modifications to this file. So let me explain things a bit. Starting from Oracle version 12c, Oracle has introduced a type of architecture or uh, structure in their database known as the multi-tenant system in which case uh, what basically happens is they have we basically have two kinds of databases when we install oracle we have the container database and we have the pluggable database now i will not go into too much detail about uh, what this types what this uh, separate databases do but for now just know that the container database is responsible for holding metadata information about the pluggable databases and for our general database operations we need to do we need to use the pluggable database and we should not use the container database all right so by default whenever we run oracle or when whenever we run this sql console uh, the one that you see here by default when we run this oracle it logs us in into the container database so to be able to use our pluggable database we need to do some modifications to an oracle configuration file and this tnsnames.org is uh, that configuration file which we are going to have to modify now when we ran the installation you remember that we had a step like this where we had uh, where we were basically shown the configuration settings we had set up for our installation now in this screenshot here you will notice that we have a uh, option called pluggable database name or clpdb so this is the name we had set for our uh, pluggable database and by default this is the name that it is given so if you have not changed the database name by yourself this is the default name which you get when you do the installation so since we uh, kept the default settings this is the name of our pluggable database and this is the pluggable database that we will be trying to use now to use this uh, pluggable database we need to at first enable this pluggable database all right and the way we can enable uh, it is very easy you simply have to open this dnsnames.org file you can use any text editor to open it in my case i have used the uh, wordpad so anyway uh whenever when you open this dnsnames.org file you will notice that you do not have this additional uh, six or seven lines that I have added here. Okay, by default, you will have only up to here in your dnsnames.org file. So here, what we are basically doing uh, by adding these lines is we are enabling the pluggable database that has been installed. All right. So uh, I will copy this lines of uh, code into the description box of the video, so you can simply copy and paste them into your dnsnames.org file. All right. I will also be uploading this file in your Google Classroom so you can take a look at it from there as well. But essentially what's happening here is we are basically enabling the pluggable database. So ORCLPDB is the name of the pluggable database, obviously. Uh, rename it to something else if you have changed your pluggable database name. So basically rename this to whatever you have named your pluggable database. And similarly, we have, uh, we have to write down the name of our pluggable database here as well. Here we are essentially setting the host as localhost, the port number as 1521, and so on. So anyway, after we have done these modifications to the tnsnames.org file, save it and close it, okay? Now, uh, open up your SQL console, and here we will have to basically open this pluggable database. So now, uh, after editing that tnsnames.org file, we have enabled 
the pluggable database, but now we have to make sure that our SQL console has opened it. Okay, so that is our uh, pluggable database is open. Okay, and the way we do that is we will be logging in into uh, the SQL console as system database admin. All right. Now the system database admin is not the same as the system account that we have seen in the previous video. So to log in as the system database admin, for username we will write sys as sys dba. So sys is the name for our system database admin, and by writing these two keywords, that is as sys dba, we are indicating that we are trying to log in as the system database admin. For password, uh, the, the, the password is the same as the username, that is SYS. So simply write SYS here, and then you will be connected as the system database admin. Now, once you are connected as the sysdba, what we have to do is we have to open that pluggable database, right? And the command for uh, opening that pluggable database is like this, alter pluggable database, then the name of the pluggable database, which is in our case orclpdb, followed by open. There. When you get this uh, message, you can be sure that your pluggable database is now open. Now, this message essentially means that our pluggable database or CLPDB is going to be open for this session that we are going to do. But what we want to do is we want to keep this uh, pluggable database open for any future session that we do as well. So what we are going to do is we are going to save this state of the pluggable database for future sessions. And the way we can do that is by writing another command, which is very easy or very simple, or which is basically ultra pluggable database or CLPDB, then save state. There. Now, uh, in the future, whenever we want to use this pluggable database, we do not have to go through all the steps again. We can directly use it. All right. Now, let's disconnect from the uh, system database admin. By default, as I have mentioned earlier, whenever we try to log in into our SQL console, Oracle database will always log us in into the container database. But since we want to use the pluggable database, we have to indicate it somehow that we want to use the pluggable database. The syntax for indicating it is very easy. So let's see. For our username, suppose we want to log in into our system account, right? So what did we do in the previous video? We simply wrote system. And then when it asked for password, we entered the password that we used during the installation. But in this case, since we want to indicate that we want to log in into the pluggable database, we will use this syntax. We will write username followed by at the rate and then the name of the pluggable database. Okay. And then we will enter the password. There. Now we are logged in into our pluggable database. Now, if we did not do those steps that I have just shown you, whenever you try to log in using this syntax, you will get some kind of error message that says that this pluggable database is either not open or this pluggable database is not available. Some kind of error like that. But following the steps, we'll make sure that your pluggable database is enabled and it is open for all kinds of sessions that you plan to do now or in the future. All right, so hopefully this solves some of the issues that uh, we face whenever we try to run Oracle database the first time after installation. And I will see you guys later in the next video. Take care.